Hi students, I'll try in this educational video to technologically introduce the solicitations in thin shells as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. Well, let's consider an infinitesimal shell element model like it is depicted by the figure that you see now in this slide. Infinitesimal means that this shell element is considered infinitely small with its dimension dx along x and dy along y. This shell element is represented by its mid-surface located at the half thickness and you can notice that it has two curvatures. The curvature along x characterized by its radius of curvature denoted by capital Rx and its curvature along y is characterized by its radius of curvature denoted by capital Ry. You can notice also that we have hatchet areas in the face with normal x and also in the face with normal y. These hatchet areas are located at a distance z from the mid-surface and they have a height dz. For the hatchet area in the face uh, with the normal x, we have a tensile stress denoted by sigma x applied normally to this hatchet area and we have a shear stress denoted by tau xy applied at the plane of this hatchet area and directed toward the y direction. We have also another uh, shear stress denoted by tau xz applied at the plane of the hatchet area and directed toward the z direction. Similarly, for the other hatchet area in the face with normal y, we have a tensile stress denoted by sigma y applied normally to the hatchet area, and we have a shear stress denoted by tau yx applied at the plane of the hatchet area and directed toward the x direction, and we have another shear stress denoted by tau yz applied at the plane of the hatchet area and directed toward the z direction. Now I'll talk about the membrane forces and the radial shear forces. The membrane forces are applied in the mid surface while the radial shear forces are applied normally to the mid surface. So if we consider a mid surface as it is highlighted here in blue, we have the first membrane force denoted by Nx and directed along x and based on the model that I explained before, the membrane force in X can be determined using the formula that you see now in this slide. On the other side, we have NX plus the variation of NX along X. The second membrane force is denoted by NY and it's directed along Y. And based on the same model, it can be determined using the formula that you see now in this slide. On the other side, we have NY plus the variation of NY along Y. And we have a twisting membrane force denoted by NXY and it's determined based on the same model using the formula that you see now in this slide. On the other side, we have NXY plus the variation of NXY along X. And we have a second twisting membrane force denoted by NYX and it's obtained based always on the same model using the formula that you see now in this slide. And in the other side, we have NYX plus the variation of NYX along Y. This is for the membrane forces. For the radial shear forces, we have the first one, QX. This QX is determined based always on the same model using the formula that you see now in this slide. On the other side, we have QX plus the variation of QX along X. And we have the second radial shear force denoted by QI and QI is determined based on the same model using the formula that you see now in this slide. And in the other side, we have QI plus the variation of QI along Y. Now I'll talk about the bending moments and the twisting moments applied on the considered infinitesimal shell element. So if we consider the mid surface as it is depicted in blue, we have the first bending moment denoted by mx and it's determined based on the model that I explained before 
using the formula that you see now in this slide. On the other side, we have the bending moment mx plus the variation of this bending moment mx along x. We have the second bending moment, which is denoted by my, and it's determined based on the same model using the formula that you see now in this slide. On the other side, we have my plus the variation of my along y. And we have the twisting moments, which are mxy, and this mxy is determined based always on the same model using the formula that you see now in this slide. And uh, here mxy is equal to myx, and we will talk about myx later. And in the other side, we have mxy plus the variation of myxy along x. We have also the myx, the second twisting moments, which we say that it's equal to mxy. And uh, if we consider this myx in this side, in the other side, we have myx plus the variation of myx along y. The question here, why the twisting moment mxy should be equal to the twisting moment myx? The answer is simply because the shear stress tau xy should be equal to the shear stress tau yx in the stress state. And also here, the twisting curvature xy is the same as the twisting curvature yx. So the radius of the twisting curvature r xy is the same for the calculation of mxy and for the calculation of myx. This educational video takes on. Please, if you have any questions, remarks, or suggestions, please mention it in the comments. Thank you very much for your attention.